Audi TT Mark 1 engine oil change and oil filter change. I accept no responsibility or liability for any injury, damage or loss caused from the content of this video. Don't forget to check out some of my DIY repair tutorials here on YouTube that may help with some common Audi TT fixes such as CV joints, jacking the car, track rod ends, etc. If you want to jump to the relevant step in the video, please see the timestamps here. Here's a list of tools and parts you'll need to complete this job. The job has a difficulty rating of 2 out of 5. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this useful. I find it fairly important to get the car up to temperature before starting an oil change, so take it on a run for about 10 minutes or so before beginning the task. This gives the oil chance to get nice and hot and flow out of the drain plug easier. So I've taken it for a spin and put it in the garage for placing on axle stands. For where to jack on the chassis and place your axle stands, I will leave a link to one of my other tutorials explaining this. So I would recommend using a trolley jack as shown and a pair of axle stands. With our first look at the underside of the car, you can see there is a plastic tray that covers the bottom of the engine. Handy for aerodynamics, but not so great when trying to access the sump plug and oil filter. We will need to remove this. The aero tray is fixed in place with 12 T20 Torx head screws, so you will need a T20 Torx bit or screwdriver to remove these. You may also notice my under tray has a nasty hole punched through it where the previous owner has taken it a little too fast over speed bumps or similar. This was evidence on the sump itself. It should not affect the aero performance of the car though, so we'll leave it as it is. Additional to the torque screws are these larger flathead plastic retaining screws either side of the tray. They can be accessed under each front wheel arch towards the front. Now simply slide the aero tray towards the rear of the car and it should come away easily. Here we can see the oil sump that holds the oil reserve for the engine. Also shown is the drain plug. This is located at the bottom rear of the sump and needs a 19mm socket to loosen and remove so the oil can drain away. Worth noting, you should have a container suitable to catch up to 5 litres of hot engine oil. So make sure you have your container ready. I'm using an old paint pot with a resealable lid. Also make sure you have plenty of rags available as it can be messy. Keep plenty of pressure on the bolt as you try to remove it. For the last few turns, do this by hand so you're ready to catch the oil. If time is not a factor, I would leave this a couple of hours to drain as much of the old oil out as possible. Make sure you put the sump plug somewhere safe for refitting later. The filter is located in front of the engine block and shrouded in a maze of pipes and tubes. It is accessible from underneath still and fairly obvious when you see it. You should be able to unscrew this using your own hand strength, but if not, wrap a filter removing tool around it and unscrew anti-clockwise. It is a little tight for space under here, so take your time and try to keep the filter upright. It will contain oil still, despite the draining. It unscrews fairly easy compared to most cars I've changed the filter on in the past. Here you can see where the filter mounts onto the car. It has come away nice and cleanly, but worth giving this a good wipe to remove any bits of rubber seal or dirt that may be left behind so you create a good seal when refitting the new filter. The oil filter I'm fitting on my Mark 1 Audi TT Cabriolet 225 engine is the MAN W719-30. I bought mine from Amazon for £6.66 with free next day delivery. It's not going to break the bank this one. Dip your finger into some new engine oil and gently apply it to the rubber gasket on the new oil filter. This will help it create a good seal with the car. Next, take the new filter and screw it in as tight as you can clockwise by hand to the filter mount. Take a cloth and clean off any excess oil and that should be your filter fitted. This step sounds fairly obvious but also key that you do not forget to do it, otherwise you will be wondering why the car is taking so much oil when filling. Give the drain hole a good wipe with a cloth to clean it as much as possible. Then clean your drain plug if you have not already done so. It is recommended that you replace the washer that is on the drain plug when you change the oil as it is made of a soft metal that compresses slightly when tightening. On this occasion I did not do that but at the next oil change if the seal is not good enough I will make sure I change it. So screw the bolt in finger tight and then finish off driving it home with a 19mm socket and a torque wrench set to 30 newtons or 22 pounds of foot torque. Give the plug a final wipe and you're ready to fill it with oil. To fill the car with oil it needs to be level so it's time to remove the axle stands. 
Next, working under the bonnet, remove the oil filler cap as shown. Inspect the filler cap for evidence of milky or emulsion-like residue. This could be a sign of head gasket failure. Mine is all okay here. Next, insert a funnel into the oil filler cap hole to make filling easier. The correct oil for my engine is this 5W30 fully synthetic grade. I have bought it in these 1 litre cans from Lidl as they were on special offer. Two 1 litre cans for £10. The car will hold 4.5 litres of oil when full according to the manual, so filling should cost £25 with a little oil left over. These 1 litre cans are much easier to pour than the cumbersome 5 litre types. So I add 4 litres of the oil to begin, checking the garage floor for any sign of leaks. All good so far. I then leave for 5 further minutes to allow all the oil to settle in the sump. After 5 minutes, pull the dipstick out and give it a wipe on a cloth. Check the fill level on the hatched marker at the base, but it will still need to prime the filter. If it is, carefully add another 200 millilitres of oil, replace the filler cap and start the engine. The oil pressure light may come on initially while the engine comes up to pressure, but it should go out shortly afterwards. Do not raise the revs of the engine above idle during this time to prevent engine damage. Turn the engine off after 30 seconds and allow the oil to settle again. Check the dipstick and top up the oil now that the filter is primed. Add 100 millilitres at a time using the guide on the side of the oil can to measure. Once at the correct level, close the bonnet, check for leaks on the floor and place the car back on the axle stands. Fitting the aero panel is simply a case of working the reverse to removal. Slide the panel into place from the rear, ensuring the front fork section slot above the bumper edge. Fasten the four flathead bolts, two in each wheel arch, to support the edges of the panel before proceeding to screw the 12 torque screws in with your T20 bit. Once complete, lower the vehicle to the ground once more and it's mission accomplished. Thanks for watching. Feel free to post any comments in the section below.